Um, just wish they had a great time. Um, peace is going to be an incredible, incredible experience. Sounds cliche, but we all say once you have an OTS, it's really a transformational experience. There's a no before and after an OTS course, and you have some amazing instructors. And so I'm sure they're going to have a great time. And for anything, you can, um, my, my um, email address, you can find it online or you can ask for it for Darko Emilia, and we're here, here to support and help you with everything. What we can um, do too is if people want to put their email addresses in the, yeah. the chat, maybe that would be great. Yeah. Well, hello everyone. I'm Pablo Munoz. I work alongside with Sophie in the education department. I am the education specialist, but I'm also a biologist. I did took my course back in 2018. And since then I've been working as a TA and now on the organization itself. Um, I hope you're gonna have a great, great experience. Um, the same as with Sophie, we are totally reachable. If you need something, something to support on the stations or anything else. Um, also about Darko and Amy, they are really great instructors. I know them from some time ago. And I hope you're gonna have a great, great time. So enjoy your stay and your really big trip. Well, I prepared a little bit of presentation for the instructors from the course. So sorry for Brooks, uh, Sofia and Paul, <laughs> you're not included. Um, my, my name is Darko Gutierrez. I'm the coordinator of the course. Uh, I'm a biologist, evolutionary biologist, currently a Humboldt postdoctoral fellow at the Senckenberg Museum in Frankfurt in Germany, where I am currently. And before that, I was a postdoc between UC Santa Cruz and the Cal Academy, did my PhD at UC Berkeley, and my master's and bachelor's at the Universidad de Chile. I've been involved with OTS for several years in different roles as co-coordinator, faculty, and mentor for undergraduates and graduate courses, Spanish version and English versions. So, Emilia? You're muted again. Hello, <laughs> Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Emilia. You can call me Emmy. Uh, I'm going to be the co-coordinator of this course, and I'm super excited about this. Uh, I love these field courses uh, and for sure, and I know you're going to love it too, because uh, I went through all of that that you're going through. So I, after my first OTS course, I just could not give up. And then I just kept going and going as, as TA for several years and then by the professor and our co-coordinator in different courses from undergrads, to grad students to um, uh, high school students together with Sofia as well. Uh, and I love every course. So for sure, we're gonna have a really good time. Uh, I am a biologist, I am Tika. I don't know if you guys know what that means, but it means that I am from Costa Rica and I'm very proud of that. I love my country and I want to show it to you guys. Um, I um, specialize mostly in like entomology and arachnology. So I love like the tiny creatures. Um, yeah, that would be like shortly who I am. <laughs> and uh, we're missing here also Raquel Castro, who is the teaching assistant for our, our course. Uh, she graduated from biology at Universidad Nacional de Costa Rica and she, she will be with us during the whole month. Great, thanks Darko. I think if you wanna just go right into the talk and then maybe at the end we can, we'll open it up to questions for students and then they'll have an opportunity at that time to maybe introduce themselves, say where they're from. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and continue with the, the uh, orientation and then uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Great. So, uh, well, first, uh, I want to say that I'm personally, and I know all the other people from OTS, where, and we were talking about this before, we're very excited about this course happening, not because this type of course is always exciting, but also because after this pause of COVID, these things coming back. So it is always a great uh, news. But this is now it's especially good because of all the enthusiasm to get out in the forest again. So we're very happy. And also we're very happy, and we were talking about this before, 
to actually get to meet you at least through the computer now, because we've all been working on putting together the course for a few months already. And it, it, this is for you guys. And now knowing the people who learn from this course, it's, it's a great feeling. Until a few seconds ago, it was very abstract, just the course for the students, but now we know who will benefit from this. So that's also a great feeling. So having said that, I'm gonna start a brief, uh, about 15 minutes uh, introduction to the course to give you a broad idea. And hopefully this will give you some, um, some things to think about questions that will better prepare you to the course. So this very awful, very long text, uh, it's part on the syllabus, so I'm not gonna read it, but I think there's one sentence that it really characterizes what we will be doing this month. So this sentence says that one major challenge of tropical biology is to understand the complexity of tropical ecosystem and their internal processes and to elucidate general patterns of multiple species interaction in an heterogeneous landscape. So a lot of these words, complexity, multiple uh, interactions, heterogeneous landscape, tropical biology, kind of summarize what we're gonna see. We're gonna see a lot of interaction, a lot of elements, so I think complexity is what we will be facing during this very short but intense month. The way of how we're gonna reach different goals of this, and I'm not gonna read this in detail so you can see it on the syllabus, but some important terms are, we're gonna study a lot of ecological mechanisms. So basic biology, how this terrestrial tropical ecosystem works, but also we're gonna put them in a global dynamic sense. So how they fit into a bigger picture on the planetary ecosystem. But we will not only think about pure biology, but also we link that with conservation and management. So these ecosystems happen in interaction with humans and we do have a very strong impact. So we're gonna address those topics too. And the methodology that we're gonna go through reach these goals is basically the scientific method. So we're gonna learn by doing. This course is a mix of lectures in a classroom, but a lot of time in the field, but also hands-on field uh, uh, scientific experiments and scientific observations. That's kind of the style of OTS, this learn by doing. And for this, we're, gonna, we're very lucky to have different instructors who are researchers themselves, and they're gonna guide you to these uh, projects. Also, there will be an emphasis in communication skills, not only through writing, but also to presenting to your colleagues, because that's like, essential in science. Okay, so having this broad view of what we're gonna do, we're gonna visit three different field stations. The first one is La Selva, which is located in this uh, Caribbean flatlands. It's a lowland rainforest. It's quite impressive. You're gonna see once you are there, Imagine this just full of sounds of birds, frogs, insects, uh, mammals here and there. It, it is very, uh, you can feel the diversity. And indeed, sometimes the biodiversity tries to crawl under your skin. So you have to be careful with that too. Uh, this area is, the, the station is bisected by this large river. So this also gives us the opportunity to see other types of environments more open. And also within the station, there are swamps and little creeks, which add up diversity. The station has kilometers of paths that you can navigate for either research projects or when we do the naturalist walks. It goes through primary forests, secondary forests, swamps, and rivers, as I mentioned. So it's fairly diverse and a good representation of this lowland neotropical forest. Perhaps one of the better studied pieces of forest tropical forest in the world. Yeah, the diversity, it's huge at all levels. It's just absolutely and incredibly overwhelming in the best sense possible. And you will see that during the day, at night, in the afternoon, in the morning. Here, we're gonna have many activities and we're gonna go into more detail once we are there, but just to give you an idea, we're gonna have about a total of eight lectures that are more introductory lectures to make sure that we're all at the same level at the conceptually. We're gonna have different research seminars from the, your instructors, from us, which will not be like a class, like the lectures, they will be about real research. So more focus on, on one specific question, 
We're gonna have a paper discussion of research that happened actually at the station. We're gonna have a natural, so these three things are kind of in the classroom. We're gonna have also a lot of time and actually most of the time outside doing a naturalist walk in the station to see what is there. We're gonna do that during the day and also during the night, but also during the early morning, a bird watching walk, which you will be amazed with the diversity. We're also gonna do a long walk where we're gonna spend a whole day seeing all these different uh, types of environments that I mentioned at the beginning. We're gonna have different field exercise, which are not research project itself, but it's more about learning a particular methodology or thinking about something while in the field. We're gonna have a movie night to discuss topics related with conservation and the effects of uh, agriculture in the, in, in the neotropics. We're gonna have visits outside the station. We're gonna to go to a cacao farm uh, where they produce cacao in a sustainable manner, as well as visit an ecological restoration project. And finally, perhaps one of the, what was gonna take a larger amount of the time, we're gonna have a group project where we are lucky to have these two researchers, Jenny Stinovsky and Juan Moreira, who will lead you. So you're gonna split into groups to do research with them. We're gonna talk more about them once the time arrived, but just so you know, uh, Jenny, she's a professor at the University of Costa Rica. She's an herpetologist. She did her dissertation at La Selva. So she has a very uh, wide experience studying poison dart frogs. Now she's working also in venoms. Uh, Juan Moreira, he's, also, he's from Costa Rica. He studies bats and pollination. He also has done research at ODS stations and he just got his PhD from the University of Missouri in St. Louis. So from La Selva, we're gonna cross the, the Guanacaste Cordillera and we're gonna get to Palo Verde, which is in the kind of towards the Pacific side and from the lowland rainforest in the Caribbean side, we're gonna get to a dry forest close to the Pacific area. So immediately you can see how the vegetation change and during the time in, in the station, we're gonna go into great detail about the phenology, the species that live there, what are the most important abiotic factors? And the forest looks more like this. I think you can immediately see the difference with the picture that I showed you before. This is a dry forest, not in the sense of like a desert. It actually gets, I think, a fair amount of water, maybe a thousand, a thousand millimeters per year, but focus on one season. So it's very seasonal. And that make, gives this character of a dry forest. We will be there during a time when perhaps and you're gonna, you're gonna experience that, one of them, the mosquitoes are extremely abundant. So there's, there has been more water, I think a little bit before or, or some, no, this is kind of the rainy season. So be really well prepared and I will give you some advices at the end of what to bring to be protected from the mosquitoes, which are of course, part of the nature. Ironically, in some way, this dry forest is next to one of the largest wetlands in the Pacific coast of Central America. Here is a place where you can see many, many species of water birds uh, or also frogs, crocodiles, and that will also add some natural history what we'll be seeing. So this is a little bit of the animals and plants that you will see there. If you like birds, it, it, just going to the weather will be incredible. And many, many types of reptiles and also arachnids are around this forest. Here, we will be joined by other two faculties. So at Palo Verde, we're gonna have four lectures, two research seminars corresponding to the research from these guest faculties. We're gonna have a naturalist walk during the day, a night walk at, at night, <laughs> and group projects. Again, the dynamic, you split in two groups. Uh, one of our faculty is Sabrina Amador. She's a staff researcher at the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute. She has done research for many, many years in Palo Verde, studying the interaction between ants and acacia trees. And also we have Frank Joyce. He's part of the University of California Study Abroad program. He, he's based also in Guanacaste, this area of dry forest. He re, does research with insects, but also with birds. So we, we try to select uh, faculties that can give you uh, different study systems to choose from, different methodologies. So 
please try to take advantage of that. If you don't work with one uh, faculty, still feel free to go and talk to the other. And from Palo Verde, then we're gonna go up this mountain chain and go through the mountains, past very close to the highest peak of Central America, Chirripo, and end up very close to the border with Panama in Las Cruces, our final station. So on the way, we're gonna see this type of environment, uh, kind of around here, which is uh, Paramo, something that very different to the other two places. The Paramo is more common in high elevations areas in, in South America, but we're gonna get the chance to see some of these. We're gonna do a brief stop. So that will also add diversity to, to this trip. And once we get to Las Cruces, we're gonna be in a third type of ecosystem. In this case, a montane rainforest, perhaps closer to La Selva, but with the elevation element. So the trays will do more like this. Immediately you can see the changes in elevation. There are other uh, characteristics that make it different from this uh, floodplain, which is La Selva. And we're gonna discuss that over there. An interesting element of this station is that there is the reserve, which is this one, but there's also a relatively or fairly large botanic garden with a huge collection of different tropical plants from different parts of the world, particularly with a lot of palm trees and different types of banana trees. So that will be also a resource that you will have just to see sometimes, but also to maybe ask questions in, in your own project. Again, diversity here is quite amazing. You can get to see these very uh, charismatic uh, uh, glass frogs among <laughs> many other species. Here, we're gonna have only one lecture, one research seminar, uh, another paper discussion. And this case will be about research that happens not, not directly at the station, but nearby in a restoration project. Naturalists walk during the day, naturalists walk during the night, a long hike, and in this case, the long hike will be outside the station. We will go to Las Alturas, which is a satellite station from OTS, even closer to the border with Panama, right at the edge of La Mistad, which is an international park. The, I think it's the largest track of primary forest in the in whole Central America. And here, the aim is to go up and see this more cloud looking, more, more cloud forest. We're going to see this cloud forest. We're also going to pass through patches with bamboo, which we will not see growing naturally in the other sites. And we're going to end up in an elfin forest, which is like a forest that everything looks kind of little. So this will be one day. Here, we also will do other visits outside the station. We will go to a coffee farm, which where they plant coffee, uh, shaded coffee in a sustainable way. And we'll visit two different restoration projects. And indeed, in the visit of one of them, we're going to have the opportunity to participate in a half a day uh, restoration activity in collaboration with the community and the people from this uh, restoration site. Here, you will also do an individual project. So the first two stations, you will be guided by a, a, an advisor, basically, the faculty. But here, you will have the opportunity to come up with your own questions and your own hypothesis and gather your own data and finally find a result and present it. It is quite challenging uh, because it's not only about getting a good question, but it's also making it happen in a very short period of time. So I will say that this is perhaps one of the, it's kind of like the pinnacle of all the activity where everything comes together. And it's great as an opportunity to, to fail, maybe, your idea wasn't that great, but that's how the scientific method goes. So this is a, will be a great opportunity and we'll ha we will have a fair amount of time to discuss, to try different things, etc. So to finish this presentation, I just want to highlight a few things that are a must bring for sure. The first one is rubber boots. Uh, this is extremely important, not only because of the water, but because it's a means to, to be protected against the snakes. Uh, we're going to go into more details on safety once we're there, but of course we're going to be in the tropics and particularly in La Selva, snakes, uh, vipers, the feather lands are relatively common, so you need to be prepared. Nothing to be really worried. I mean, in La Selva, there are hundreds of scientists and there have been going hundreds of scientists per year for like four decades. 
And the few cases that at least I'm aware of a snake bite happened when someone was not wearing boots and getting into the forest with flip flops. So with a very minimum protection, and of course, being aware of your surroundings, it's fine. Also very important, bring long sleeves, shirts, and pants. Dr. Really can, can I just make a comment on the sure. rubber boots? Um, it is possible that you can purchase rubber boots once you arrive as well. Um, I know that some students have trouble finding them before they come, but um, if you can't find any, not a problem, we can get some once you arrive. Sorry, Darko, I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's important. One thing to consider about getting there, uh, it is not my, it has, well, I have never bought rubber boots there, but it wouldn't be a problem for me, but I have heard from some people, especially really tall people, it might be difficult to find the right size. So keep that in mind if you are extremely tall. Um, or if okay. you just have big feet. Yes. So if you are in the <laughs> if you are in the extremes of the size distribution, maybe you have to be a little bit more careful and not hundred percent rely on finding whatever you you need in the very short period of time because we're gonna go immediately to the forest. So, <laughs> but yes, it's a possibility. But let us know and we can coordinate that. Long sleeves and long pants. That's important because of the mosquitoes. We are gonna encounter them, especially in Palo Verde. And you will gonna be very grateful of yourself if you bring them. Uh, in the places where we're gonna go, at least to my knowledge in the recent time, let's say decades, there have not been cases of malaria, but for example, in La Selva, there have been cases of dengue. Uh, I don't know if there is a recent outbreak, I don't think so, but you know, as we have learned with COVID, while there is an outbreak happening, you don't know until you are one of the many that went into the outbreak. <laughs> so it's better to have this protection, unlikely to get one of malaria, uh, dengue, for example, but still important to be protected. Um, also related with the snakes, uh, it is a policy of OTS to use closed toe shoes. Again, it's hot, it's tropical, but for safety, once you move inside the station, just don't wear free flops. Maybe if you want to wear free flops when you are taking a shower, fine. But when you're outside, it's with uh, closed toe shoes. Uh, mosquitoes, again, bring this item to the, to the backpack. Bring a bandana or some sort of like light scarf to protect your neck, maybe your head, because that also could uh, prevent the mosquitoes being so annoying. A yoki or like a baseball cup could be useful for the sun. And again, for the mosquitoes. Sorry, another interruption there. Now yes. that we keep talking about mosquitoes, I know um, using leggings is super comfortable while you are in the field. Uh, I mean, leggings, I don't know if, if that's how you yeah. say it, right? <laughs> uh, but if you only bring leggings, there are, the mosquitoes are gonna go through the leggings and it's gonna be better if you bring like at least one pair of, um, loose pants because then the mosquitoes have like more space between the clothes and, and your skin. So it's less likely that you're going to get like beaten from the mosquitoes, just like a, a tip. <laughs> right. And that also applies to the more rare case of a snake bite. If you have like a loose pant, uh, it's less likely it will go directly to your skin. But that's a very uncommon situation, but still take home message, just wear loose clothes. Um, so again, mosquitoes, mosquito repellent, it's a good idea. There are many different types. Uh, I, I would recommend in general, think deed uh, over 40%. Some people, for some people, deed could be a little bit harsh on their skin. So if you have never used repellent, maybe put it on your skin before coming to Costa Rica, like in your hand and see how your skin reacts after maybe an hour or so. And most likely we will be fine. For example, DEET has been used for decades and millions of people daily, but uh, that's something to take uh, consideration if you haven't used it before. Of course, sunscreen, of course, a day backpack because we will be going out very frequently and a bottle for water. Uh, water is perhaps the most 
realistic uh, field concern, getting dehydrated, especially if you are in a humid place, you kind of don't realize how much you're sweating. So uh, snakes is very, could be very dangerous, but it's very unlikely. Dehydration could be underestimated, but very likely. And because we are in COVID time, we recommend to bring a couple of antigen tests because, um, yeah, I mean, if it's better to be vigilant, we're going to be all together. So if someone thinks that's getting uh, symptoms, it's a very responsible action to test, to be tested, and to be sure that if the person can still be with the group or needs to be isolated. Just think about if, if we, if someone of us gets COVID, most likely would infect other people. And baseline, you're going to be, or we're going to be, to be isolated for a week, which is like a quarter of the course. So it is in everyone's best interest to, that we're all careful and responsible to minimize this situation. Worst case scenario, it could happen at the very end of the course, then you lose your flight. So it's better to be very careful with COVID. Also bring masks, FPP2 or N95. We're going to be outside, uh, we're all vaccinated, but at some points we're going to be, um, well, not some points, every day. We're going to have dinner with other people, so maybe when you're uh, doing the line to get the food, it's a good idea to have your mask. Once we are indoors, it's also a good idea to have your mask. At, at this point, it's pretty clear that having the vaccines is not enough to be protected 100%. So if we take measurements to reduce the potential spread of the virus, safer for everyone. Same alcohol gel, it's useful. And in this case, not only for COVID, once we're hiking and we're gonna have lunch, it is a good idea to wash your hands. Also uh, for the projects, uh, we're gonna need computers. So if you have a notebook, please bring it. If you don't have access to one, we can coordinate uh, and OTS has some set of computers so they can be borrowed for the time of the course. But this should be coordinated ahead of time. So please get in contact with us if you don't have a, a notebook to bring to the course. And finally, something that is optional is because you're not gonna need any money during the course, food, transportation, everything is provided, of course, you already pay for it. But uh, we are gonna visit a few sites, uh, two of the restoration, one, yeah, two of the restoration sites where you can get uh, handcraft uh, objects that are quite nice. And also the station have gift shops. So if you want to get any of those things, and I mean, the gift shop have very tempting books, field guides, t-shirts. So if you want to get any of those, uh, of course, they're not going to get take dollars, so get colones. The one thing where money- I would say- Huh? Darko, I would let me just I would just want to interrupt for a second and just say that um, you can you'll be there'll be an opportunity once you arrive to take out colones. Um, so don't feel pressure to to get some uh, converted before you come. The rate will be much better once you arrive. Um, and, you know, some places will take a, a credit card, but we'll we'll talk. I have a few notes later talking about um, money and things of that nature. But like Darko said, most of like your transportation, all your food will be covered by OTS. However, some people like to have snacks or maybe you want some candy or additional things. Uh, it's a good idea to have some um, yeah, effectivo or cash with you uh, so you can pay for some of those smaller, smaller items. Sorry, Darko, I just wanted to interject there. Yeah, and the one last thing about, and this is the last thing I want to say about money is in the unlikely event of a medical emergency, say you twist your ankle, you have like diarrhea, or you have like an infected wound, at the hospitals, usually you will have to pay when you receive attention. And then with your uh, health insurance, you might get the reimbursement back in the US. So that might be a good idea. That might be a reason as to why to have some cash uh, to make that easier. But it's a very unlikely event. I don't know what are your feelings based on the previous experience. In, previous courses where I've participated, when students have needed to go for minor things to the hospital, then they need to pay a little bit for, for the attention, for the appointment. And yeah, in the worst case, you can go and get from the ATM money, but then you have to pay a little conversion fee. So it's not super necessary, but if you have already, I don't know, maybe a hundred dollars turned into colones, 
you're like super safe in this worst case scenario. I don't know if, what, what's your insights. And, and with that, I'm done with my presentation. Yeah, you know, I think, I think it's good. To, uh, there'll be opportunities for you to get cash, you know, uh, depending on where you are in the course. So I think it's a good idea. You know, if you want to take out a little bit at a time, that's fine. If you want to take out a larger sum, that's up to you. I just think in general, it's, it's an, I, when traveling, I don't think it's always, I don't think it's a great idea to have a lot of cash on you. Um, so I think it's better to take smaller amounts and then just talk to Darko and talk to Emmy about, you know, when would be the next opportunity where you might be able to take out money if you're, if you're running low. But again, you're not going to need very much. Um, you can get by this course with spending very little money um, because of, you know, OTS covering, you know, most everything else. Sophia, I think you have your hand raised. Yeah, just sort of going through the same thing. Um, as you were saying, you don't need to get that much. Most of the places are going to accept dollars and they're going to give you change in colones. So that might be, and it might be not the best rate, but you're still not going to change like a lot of dollars. So it's, I think that might be the easiest or in, at an ATM, but sometimes the ATM have like long lines and you have everybody there waiting. So sometimes you just go with the places where you get your coffee or something, play with when they turn $20 bill and then you're going to get the change in colonies. Yeah, yeah. So, and since we're talking about money, it's a good idea to, uh, maybe some of you have traveled internationally, some of you haven't. Uh, it's a good idea to let your bank know that you will be traveling and those dates that you will be in Costa Rica uh, because they will um, oftentimes uh, flag your account if they see unusual activity and uh, all of a sudden they see, you know, if you live in Missouri and all of a sudden you're in Costa Rica spending money, uh, they're going to flag it and they may put a hold on your account. So it's a good idea to notify your bank. It's a quick phone call. You just let them know, oh, I'm going to be in Costa Rica for these days. Uh, and so don't uh, don't put the hold on my account. So it's, uh, it's important you do that uh, rather than once you get here, it can be difficult to get a hold of your bank um, if that happens. Um, a couple other kind of logistic things that uh, students have found helpful in the past. Um, number one, so all students that are based in the U.S. should have already received uh, an OTS t-shirt um, if you're based in the United States. Um, if you haven't and you're based in the United States, please let me know. Um, and then those of you that are traveling from uh, non-U.S. locations, uh, we will have an OTS t-shirt for you when you arrive, okay? But those that are traveling from the U.S., make sure that you're wearing your shirt the day that you travel. It makes it very easy for us to identify you at the airport. Um, so all you'll do is you'll come through, you'll get your bags, you get your bags, you'll go through customs. Uh, and then there will be someone from OTS outside uh, with the sign, you know, easily recognizable uh, that you're with an OTS group. And there might be other students that have already arrived. So another thing that you'll want to make sure that you do is uh, either print out or have access on your phone to the orientation packet, okay? So that's going to have a lot of contact information, addresses, information about OTS. This may be helpful when you're going through customs where they ask you, oh, why are you here? Where are you going? They may ask for addresses. This will have all the information you need as well as contact information if for some reason uh, something happens when you're traveling you can contact us uh, and let us know the situation. Um, if your flight does get delayed, don't worry. Uh, we should, I believe we have everybody's flight information apart from one person. Um, so if your flight gets delayed, we have that information and we know when you're scheduled to arrive. Um, another thing, make sure that you bring any prescriptions that you take on a regular basis. Um, don't rely on refilling in Costa Rica. It would be uh, quite difficult. Uh, and it's a good idea too, if you can talk to your physician or your doctor to bring a little bit extra in case something happens, uh, you have to stay longer, COVID, something else happens. It's a good idea to have a little bit of a buffer there for any prescriptions. Also wanna make sure that um, you continue to take your prescriptions. So Students in the past, uh, it's very common for students to feel that because 
oh, I'm going on a study abroad opportunity. I'm going to this other country. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be great. And it will. But um, we st do strongly recommend that you continue to take any type of medication or prescriptions that you take on a regular basis. St studying abroad, especially in a field course like this, is going to be uh, st stressful at times. It's going to be challenging. It's going to challenge you both academically, emotionally, um, personally. So all those things are, are challenges that you will face. And so uh, making sure that you're still staying on top of your prescriptions is important. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact us uh, about that. Um, but we do want to make sure that people continue to take any prescriptions that, that you would take um, on a normal basis. Um, let's see. Also, other thing is, you know, know that at times you will feel you know, stressed out, you will feel maybe overwhelmed in a course like this. And just know that that is completely normal. You know, this is designed to, to challenge you, designed to be, uh, to put you outside of your comfort zone. And so don't be shocked if there are times where you're going to feel uncomfortable or you're going to feel stressed out. That's totally normal. And we are here to support you in, in those efforts. So something's troubling you, please come to Darko, come to Emmy. Go to Pablo, go to anyone here on this call or anyone that is related to the course, and we're happy to, to help out in any way that we can. Uh, we've all been in, in your shoes before, so we know what it's like, okay? Let's see. Oh, Darko mentioned this already. So if you can bring some COVID tests, great. They seem to be most readily available, I know, at least in the U.S. Um, like a couple antigen tests, the rapid tests are great. Uh, there will be an opportunity. You'll have to test negative or you come back. If you're traveling back to the U.S., then, then depending on your home country, you may have to test negative before you travel back. A um, couple other things. So you're going to be in field stations. Sometimes there will be Internet. Sometimes there won't. So just know, talk to your family, talk to your friends, let them know that connectivity. A lot of times you will be able to easily connect with people. However, there will be times where you will not be you will not have connection. So. Just set those expectations. Uh, it's quite common that I get calls from students' parents worried about uh, their student who hasn't responded to their text from two hours ago, um, or they haven't responded in half a day. And just so let your parents, let your friends know, hey, there's gonna be times where I'm not gonna be able to be reached. Um, but we have everything handled in terms of if there was an emergency, we have all the procedures in place that if something were to happen, we have your emergency contact information. We can contact the right people and we can take the appropriate steps. Okay. Um, well, on a less serious note, um, I often students I think have found it helpful if you can, you know, things to bring in addition to some of the essentials like mosquito repellent and rubber boots and sunscreen and hats and things of that nature. Um, we found a lot of students have found it useful to bring, like if you have a small musical instrument, if you play you know, an instrument, bring it along. It's great for entertainment. Um, it's something to do, especially when maybe there isn't you know, internet. Uh, so it's something that students in the past have enjoyed bringing along. Um, yeah, I don't know if anyone else has any, anything to, to add to kind of what I've mentioned in terms of logistics, uh, pick up, Oh, actually, one other thing I will say is if you're arriving before June 29th, your airport pickup and your logistics, you've got to take care of that yourself. So if you're arriving before June 29th, if you are arriving June 29th, don't worry, we'll pick you up at the airport, we'll take you to the hotel for that first day and we'll get started. Um, same thing for the end of the program. So if you're uh, if you're planning on if you're not planning on leaving on the 25th of July, you're planning on leaving later. Um, you know, wherever you decide to go after the 25th is up to you. Uh, I mean, that, it, but that is something that you have to take care of in terms of transportation, in terms of lodging, uh, whatever your plans are. Okay, so just make sure that you are aware of that because I know some students are coming a few days early or maybe staying a few days after. Okay. Uh, Emmy, Sofia, Pablo, Darko, anything, anything to add? I want to give the students an opportunity to ask questions here, but anything else that maybe I missed? 
I don't think so, but maybe we'll think of more when we hear questions. Yeah, okay. Um, so let's do this. So I'm just gonna go down the list that I have here of students that are here. And maybe if you just wanna quickly introduce yourself, say your name, um, maybe where you go to school. Um, and if you wanna share anything else, great. If not, we can, we'll move on to the next person. But um, again, very simple, just as a way for us to see, see your face, know who you are, um, should be, uh, should work out. Okay, so I'll start with, um, it looks like Arlene, you'll need to unmute yourself. But Arlene, are you, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Great. Were you going to introduce yourself? Introduce Sorry. Yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, so hi, I'm Arlene. I'm from Puerto Rico. And um, I guess I study at Purdue University. And I'm doing a bachelor's in wildlife sciences. Is there awesome. anything else? That I should mention. <laughs> no, it's whatever. It's whatever. It's a. It's an open book. It's a blank slate. So whatever you want to introduce, it's fine. Okay. So now we'll go on to Darelis. Hi, my name is Darelis. I'm for Puerto Rico too. I'm sorry, I have bad connection, so I can't talk too much. That's okay, thank you. Um, let's see, so I think next up, we'll go with Jack. Hi, um, I'm Jack. I'm from Seattle, Washington. Um, I go to Wesleyan University. <laughs> Are you from Seattle, Brooks? I am, nice. I am. <laughs> um, and I am probably majoring in um, environmental sciences. Nice. Yeah. Actually. Anything in particular you're looking forward to with this course? Maybe that's going to be the, the other thing that we can yeah. do. Um, yep. I'm really looking forward to on, kind of the, um, <laughs> the bird watching. Sounds kind of fun. <laughs> um, I've been getting into that this summer um, and just, I don't know, being in Costa Rica, I've never been before. So <laughs> the whole thing. Nice. There'll be a lot of birds to see. Don't you worry. All right, so uh, I think next up is Katarin. Hi, I'm Katarin. I am from Guatemala and I'm studying engineering natural resources. And what aspect of Costa Rica is a lot of nature to connect with nature in other way. That's what I hope. Great, welcome. Okay, and I think next, uh, Maria. Uh, hi, I'm Maria. I'm from Iowa and I go to Grinnell College. It's also in Iowa. Um, so I'm really excited to go somewhere new um, and study somewhere new. I'm also excited for the birds. I took an ornithology class this past year. Excellent, great, welcome. Okay, next up is Marty. Hey everybody, I'm Marty. I'm from Indiana. Um, I don't actually go to Purdue. I'm out, out of state. I'm uh, at McAllister College up in the Twin Cities in Minnesota. Um, but I'm studying environmental studies and definitely excited for the birds. That seems to be a common theme, but uh, yeah, it should, be, it should be awesome. So I'm excited. Yep. Very cool. Welcome. Okay, uh, let's see. I think next we'll go William. Hi, I'm William. I go to Colorado College and I'm originally from Philly and I'm excited, I think, just for the wildlife in general, birds included. Nice. Great. Okay, last but not least, I think on the call is Yareli. Hi, I'm Yareli. Yare, it's easier. I'm from Mexico and I study biotechnology engineering. I've always wanted to study biology, so I'm really excited and open to learn Mitchell. Thank you. Great, great. 
Um, oh, we didn't so hear. Now I, oh, sorry. sorry. Did I miss someone? We didn't hear from Arlene and that Elise. What are they excited for, for the course? Oh, yeah. Okay. Right? I think they're the only two that we were missing. If that Elise can hear us and we can hear. Arlene first, Arlene. So I'm really excited to try the research aspect of biology. I don't think I've ever been able to do hands-on research. So that's what I'm most excited for. Great. Yeah, there at least the question is really, what are you most excited for on this course? Um, I'm excited about the, uh, the night walk for some reason. It's something new to me. <laughs> For sure. I'm sure we'll get some get some white sheets out, some bright lights, see what insects are out. Yeah. Thank you, Sophia, for the reminder. Okay, so I kind of want to open it up now to to you guys, students to has ask questions. Um, you know, it can be anything. You know, in terms of how many socks should I bring to? You know, uh, the color clothes or. Uh, you know, you name it. Uh, we trust me. We've heard we've heard more, more ridic ridiculous questions than I'm sure you'll ask. So uh, feel free to ask any questions about anything that we talked about today, anything that we didn't cover about the course, anything at all. Feel free to just kind of unmute yourself. Uh, this is totally an open uh, an open discussion. Um, I guess, what type of luggage do you guys recommend for us to take? Um, maybe like a small suitcase or like a big backpack, like a backpacking type of backpack. I'm not sure. Yeah, Darko, I don't know if you have a, a suggestion. I think it depends, can de depend on the student. Um, I think at some locations you'll have a, a, like a small suitcase that maybe has wheels is nice. However, a backpack is nice because you can really expand it. And I, I would say, don't bring too much stuff. Try to be as efficient as you can in terms of what you pack because you'll probably wanna bring some stuff back with you. Uh, but I wouldn't say go out and buy, if you already have a suitcase that works, great. If you already have a backpack that you think will work, also great. Don't go buy new stuff. Um, it's not necessarily, not, not necessary, I would say. I don't know if Darko or Sophia or Pablo, anyone else has. Yeah, no, I agree. And we will not be hiking with everything. So we're going to arrive in the bus to the station and then you will have to move the big suitcase or the big backpack from the bus to the cabin. And pretty much in all places, it's either like paved or you're going to have to carry it for a little bit over like dirt. But yeah, it's it, both things could work. I always tell the students not to bring something that you cannot carry. So if you cannot carry it on your own, then it's too much. <laughs> That's a good yeah. You might need yeah, to for go. Sure. Can remember in Las Cruces if you're like on the second floor, so you need to go like just to the second floor to the stairs, but that's a good uh, measure. If you cannot carry it, too much. Yeah, I had another question about luggage too, in terms of whether you recommend, if we think we can manage it to not check a bag, do you think that's a good idea if we're able to? I mean, cause I just know with international travel, you know, it's like a little bit of a gamble sometimes, so. Yeah. Oh, so you're worried that you could lose the bag? Well, I mean, I'm just wondering like, if it's possible, if I can pack light enough, if if I can just have a carry on and, and that's it, that's probably, ideal or i wouldn't say ideal because that means that you're gonna not have much clothing you're gonna have to wash very frequently there are washing services in two of the stations i think three so you can do that but if your air ticket includes the possibility of checking a luggage i will say just bring it so then you you don't have to be thinking about oh i need to wash my clothes again or you're using the same clothes all the time, which I don't think is the idea. So I, I wouldn't say it's ideal, but it's up to you. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I had a question about how um, remote the uh, locations are, because in the syllabus, it says kind of that you 
can access or like there'll be like aspects of like going into town or like Costa Rican culture that you're kind of like near um, and some of them seem pretty remote. So I was just wondering how that works. Like, are we allowed, like, allowed to go into town like in evenings, stuff like that? Yeah, so it depends on the state. So Pal like Palo Verde, where I am currently, there's not really any place you can go to that's close by. Um, you're kind of at the field station and that's it. Um, however, La Selva, there are some, there's a small town close by. So, you know, if a group would needed to go into the store or, you know, we could coordinate that as well, go into the supermarket or do some other things, that's totally up to you. Um, I'm not sure how close in, in Las Cruces, uh, if, there, if there's things close by. Mm -mm. No, and I would say because of, because of COVID, you're, if you go to town, you, you're gonna need to get in, in a cab um, and you're gonna be pretty busy. <laughs> so, and because of COVID, it's just risky that you go to closed spaces and mostly you're gonna be going to a market or a store or something like that. When you are moving from one field site to the other one, you often stop by a supermarket. So that's like a chance to get everything you need. Um, and but like if you want to come and see Costa Rican culture, you're going to see it, what happens at the fuel stations. You're going to see it again when you stop by. But the places that you're going to be is not like you're going to be missing like the cultural experience <laughs> when you go to the towns nearby. I think you should enjoy the fuel stations and that's where you, not many people have the chance to go to the fuel stations that you guys are going. So I think that's where you need to take advantage of the time. But again, you're going to be seeing the towns when you go back, like if, when you go to the one field station to the other one and just try to not risk it when it's not necessary um, because of COVID as well. In yeah. the evening, I don't recommend going to places. Just, there's not like it's a dangerous country, but it's just, uh, it's like there are small towns and you all are going to look like tourists and the locals are always want to take advantage of the tourists. So, yeah, don't recommend going anywhere in the evening. After the program, it's totally up to you also. Yep. You know. And I would like to emphasize what Sophia says about COVID, that unfortunately, because of that, and because we're going to be in such a close proximity, it's better to be very conservative on how much we expose ourselves to, to get infected. Because the cost is so high, just getting infected immediately is twenty five percent of the course. You're out. Yeah, immediately it's it's a fact. Or you can lose your flight, and then it's even more complicated. So because of that factor, I think it's better to be very conservative and stay like a like a bubble. Of course, we're not going to be isolated because there's other people at the station. But to what is in our hands, I think because of COVID, it's better to. Now the stations are big. They're like like La Selva is. How many? 1,200 hectares? Or like... 1,900. Yeah, so it's not that you're going to be in lockdown. <laughs> so 50 kilometers of trails. Yeah, so... <laughs> Let you do. Yeah. Thanks. Mm, about um, the rubber boots, uh, are we going to wear them in special occasions or every time we go out to the field? Every time we go to the forest is a special occasion. <laughs> okay. And every time we wear it. Yes. It's true. I would also some one other thing related to footwear. It's a good idea to bring a pair of sandals. I think for showering, um, it's a good idea to have a pair of sandals, a flip flops, or something like that that you can wear uh, in the shower. I have a question about the weather. We are going in raining season, or I, I read that in some, some places are colder than others. I don't know what it's about. Yes, it is the rainy season. Um, so Darko mentioned uh, specifically with Palo Verde, it, even though it's a dry deciduous tropical forest, right now it won't seem like it's a dry, dry tropical forest. Uh, it will be very wet. So. Um, I would say it's pretty warm in, in general, um, warm and humid. And, but I don't know about Las Cruces, it'll be a little bit colder because you'll be up in the mountains. 
but I think it's a good idea uh, because you'll be in, you'll stop in the Paramo and you go to Las Alturas where it will be a little bit colder. So it's a good idea. Definitely bring a rain jacket, but maybe another fleece or coat like that uh, that you might want to bring. I don't know if Sophia or anyone else has any other recommendations. So yeah, in, okay, go ahead. So in, in La Selva, it's lowland, so it's going to be hot and humid the whole time. So I think with the long sleeves and the pants, that's more than enough. You, you're going to want to take them out and when you are eating with a short and t-shirt in the, like either in the, inside the classroom or in the, in the dining hall. So that's, and basically the same type of outfit would work well with uh, Palo Verde. In Las, uh, as Brooke said, in Las Cruces and Las Alturas in our short visit, then it gets a little bit colder. I think cold means the lowest is like, I don't know, maybe 15 Celsius at night in Las Cruces. Is that about right? Yeah, yeah. 15, and during the day, maybe 20, 23, 24. I don't know how much that's is that in Fahrenheit. Yeah, I feel like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I can't remember Fahrenheit. But uh, during the day, just Las Cruces is funny because during the day at midnight, I mean midnight, at noon, if they're, if it's sunny, it's hot. So you don't want to be walking around the field with like a sweater. But in the evening, it gets a little bit chilly. Like you want a hoodie on this. Yeah. Thank you. So I wanted to ask how sketchy or how true is the internet connection over there for like research and stuff? For like the computer. So I can tell you right now, we're trying to improve all our field stations um, connections. So right now there's everywhere, but there's certain things that we cannot control. So at some point you might have no internet, like rodents can eat the fiber. The monkeys, fiber. monkeys so, get electrified. Monkeys, yeah. Like we recently had like some, yeah, the, the, the optic, optic fiber got chewed by something. And so, it's good right now, but at the same time, it's gonna we're gonna be in the high season, so the field stations are packed. So it's gonna be a lot of you. So we always ask you to be very conscious of like lots of people trying to work at the same time. So no, don't be on like watching movies on Netflix at night. But a lot of people work at different times, um, and so yeah, I use it for like research aspects or for class. Um, and if you know. Everybody, for example, in La Selva, there's an area where all the classrooms are the same place. So if everybody is on internet, like chatting, watching YouTube videos, it's gonna crash because it's a lot of you. But right now it's good. It just get ready for anything. Something to always keep in mind about everything. You have to be flexible, you have to be ready for everything. Um, I want to add to that is that a good practice to do is to turn off sometimes the Wi-Fi on the phones because mm -hmm. per person to turn off the Wi-Fi on the phones because, um, you know, the number of connections sometimes are limited. As Sophie says, you're not going to be alone. You're going to be with a lot of other uh, faculty-led programs or the graduate courses. So, yeah, that sometimes helps with the connection if it's totally back the station. And, but I would say it's, it's, I'm oh, sorry, Tarko, go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, and, but if you can say something about the internet, then I will add something else. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, sometimes it can just depend on where you are at the field station, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you can be in the main comedor in the cafeteria and the signal is great, but maybe you go off to, you, to your room and the internet is poor there. So uh, it can be, it can change just depending on where you are in the field station. What, what I wanted to say, and we will repeat that once we're there, especially La Selva, uh, a lot of the, some of the labs and some of the classrooms have air conditioning and outside is very humid and hot. And have you seen what happened when you take like a soda can outside the freezer and it's very hot outside? Gets all the condensation, gets a lot of water and you don't want that to happen to your computer. So, if you have your computer inside the AC and you have it on, because then it's gonna be a little bit warm, then you can take it out and should be fine. But what would be a very bad idea 
an unusual thing to do is to have your computer inside AC cold, take it out and turn it on outside. Because then you have all the condensation and then you're gonna have a, a water and electricity. We're gonna remind you of that over there, but that's something to keep in mind. Not with the internet, but just so you know. Uh, again, about the weather, going back to the weather, uh, sometimes it can happen that there could be like a tropical storm or something going on and we just have to like be prepared for anything. Sometimes at La Selva, it, it floods, but it's common and we're just going to keep you posted with everything. Um, and I, anything anything can happen actually so just want to let you know that it could be like super hot and then we're telling you that at la selva it's usually like super hot and super humid but i was once in la selva where i was cold because i didn't bring any like sweater and then i spent like five days like super cold because things can happen here i things can change a lot but so just be prepared for any type of weather basically mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, I would, I would, sorry, I would say too, if you have clothing that is non cotton, that will dry faster. And so if you'll be in a lot of humid environments, so you, if you have non cotton clothing that is preferred over cotton. And we're going to like give you all the details day by day. So you know, everything that's going to happen when you can go to get things from the store it's not like we're gonna be like in an enclosure where you can't get anything like if you need any medicine that you forgot that it's like easy to get it's simple to go to town and, and then come back uh, like for, obviously for emergencies we can like easily go out um and yeah we'll keep you posted on everything that is going on day by day and uh, when you can do laundry how much or where and all of that so and don't hesitate asking about absolutely anything like you can ask even what you think it's like super simple and you should know about it and then you don't ask because you're ashamed that you don't know don't don't, don't think like that just ask anything that you that you don't know and you want to know that's what we're here for. We're going to be together for a long time and it's going to be super fun. We're going to know each other a lot more than we do now. Now we just have faces and names. <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone has its own needs. Um, and yeah, we, we're going to try to accommodate you all and try to make you feel comfortable and happy and learn a lot and absorb everything that we have prepared for you, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, other questions? Algunas. Yeah, don't, yeah, I'll say, like Emmy said, if you forget something, it's not the end of the world. You know, you can get toothpaste, you can get laundry detergent, you can get more shirts or, you know, a sweater or a coat if you need it, if you forgot it. It's totally fine. Um, you won't be on the moon. Sophia? Some other, some other random thing. No, not so random, maybe. Often, because you were asking, some, someone was asking about the rubber boots. I have seen some rubber boots in the US that come with a, like a lining of like a fabric in the inside of, or have like a fancy cushiony sole in the inside. Here you're using them because it could be like pouring rain when you're like completely soaking. So the inside, it's going to get wet and it will never dry out. <laughs> and those are usually the most expensive ones because they're super nice and comfortable. If there's going to be a chance, I can't remember, but the Darko and Emmy, I think in the itinerary, you probably have like a stop at the, at the supermarket or nearby and Lagar or something like that, where you can get here the cheapest plain rubber boots that are easier to try out. So don't get, don't get anything fancy. Don't invest in the super fancy backpack for the trip. Don't invest in the super fancy boots for the trip. No need. Yeah, also uh, about 
shoes as well. What what I will bring, for example, I will be I will bring rubber boots. I will bring hiking shoes and tennis shoes because I like to run. So sometimes I will run, and those those will be my shoes and uh, flip flops for like staying in the room. Okay, is there anything, anything else? I'm trying to think if there's anything in my notes here. Make sure you wear your t-shirts if you're from the US when you travel so we can identify you. Make sure you have access to the orientation packet. Um, don't forget your passport, it's important. <laughs> um, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. Yeah, I just had one last thing about the passport. I just remembered, uh, I, I think I saw in the packet, there's something about like, it'd be a good idea to have like photocopy or so we want to have the, the original, of course, but is that a good idea to have an extra photocopy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But just take a picture with your phone. So you'll have it in your phone. Great. Okay. We're talking well, about wanna... all the nuances, but it's going to be very exciting. You're going to forget none of these little things are going to be important because you're going to have so much fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be great. I'm jealous of all of you. Um, yeah. So we will. Um, so I think I'm conscious of, I want to be conscious of people's times. It's been a little bit over an hour. So um, we, we have recorded this session. So if you miss something or you just love hearing someone's voice, you can watch it again. Um, and I think one or two students couldn't make it today, so we'll share it with them also. Um, and yeah, and I think Darko or Sofia, will, will we be creating a like a WhatsApp group or any type of communication group with, with these students? In the past, we've done a Facebook page, but I don't know how much students now use Facebook, What's so that? maybe a WhatsApp group. That's up to you guys or like that one. I mean, the way you want to communicate. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll leave that. Yeah, I'll leave that to you guys then. Yeah. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, I'll let everyone go. Um, if anything does come up, feel free to email us, and see you guys soon. Thank you. You guys take care.